Hello, Warren. Hello, Bob. Phony Warren from bed -Stuy. It's the phony Warren from bed -Stuy, yeah. who has emerged as almost as popular as the original. Yeah, well, you know, the old geezer called up a little while ago. He starts complaining about me. And uh, all I know is I didn't buy all this Misha gossip out how he tries to get through, but he can't. I mean, this this imbecile Phil manages to get through like uh, five times a show, you know? You know, he's not, he's not gonna wait on the line. And then he says, oh yeah, I'm gonna start calling in again. Bob, you know like how, how an old newspaper gets like uh, yellow and brittle? That's you, what he's like, you know? <laughs> Useless. You know what would be great if uh, the uh, phony Warren and the original Warren would both be at Queensboro Community College tomorrow. So everybody could see the original versus the ersatz, and then we could select which one we prefer. Bob, the guy can't even manage to pick up the phone and call, and you expect him to actually go somewhere? I mean, you're giving, you're giving him... He's like, you know what he's like? He's like uh, human waste. Solid human waste. Wow. I mean, I don't, Bob, you know I don't like saying this stuff. You know, I, I genuinely love the guy. I mean, I have... The utmost respect and admiration for him, but what am I supposed to do? Lie to the people? He let us all down, and that's something I'll never forgive him for. Well, see, people don't understand what this is all about. Uh, th this is uh, the fake Warren who is calling because the original Warren stopped calling, and more out of uh, out of his uh, regret than uh, anger, uh, he is saying very harsh things. Well, you know, you just know where I'm coming from, Bob. I do, I do. As far as Phil is concerned, Phil is an amazing guy because uh, Phil is able to get through any time he wants. Now, he, he got through three state straight days. Yeah. And finally, on the third straight, I said, hey, Phil, you're overdoing it. Well, now his feelings will be hurt. He probably won't call for a long time. The guy's like a motor mouth. But... Uh, you know, Ogumbata from Yonkers used to be that way in his calling career. His feelings would get hurt every now and then. He'd stop calling. And I would find out that uh, it was a very slight pretext. Uh, under very slight pretext, he would uh, he would be offended. But now Ogumbata from Yonkers has just plain old retired. Total retirement. Can you believe a caller would actually retire? I wonder if, I wonder if he gets any... Uh, Warren has a retired... You don't think Warren retired? Yeah, well, maybe, hey, maybe... You know what? Some people have written to me saying that maybe the original Warren of bed -Stuy, because he said certain things on the program, maybe somebody got him. Somebody got him? Yeah. No. Oh, come on. Well, that's what some people are afraid of. That's ridiculous. Well, that's... Hey, you can't blame people for, for thinking. Or for not thinking. Well, I hope he's all right. I'll tell you that much. All right, Warren. Are you going to be at uh, Queensborough Community College tomorrow? Well, uh, you have to understand something, Bob. Some of us work for a living, and it's not that easy to get over there. I mean, uh, you know, you're, I know you're doing your job, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of old ladies there. But um, I, it's going to be hard for a lot of us to get down there. But don't think it's like we're betraying you. It's just that we can't make it. I understand. I understand. Okay. Thank you, Warren. Wait, well, Bob. Yes. I want to comment on this whole racial thing. That's going okay, good. Go ahead. Okay. Now, now, what happened in Howard Beach is no different than what happens like a thousand times a day in this city. I mean, a group of punks ganging up on another group of punks. It's always been happening, and it always will happen. It did end in tragedy. But the guy obviously lived a very dangerous life. You know, I mean, his police record alone is proof of that. So, you know, in a way, he had it coming. But then all of a sudden, all these so-called reverends start coming out of the woodwork. And before they even know the facts, they're already making headlines about racism. Yeah. And, and you know that if these kids, these black kids, were completely innocent... Uh, yeah, they would have talked wh about what happened until they were blue in the face. Mm. A and as far as this uh, Bumpus case is concerned, do people actually believe that this guy was so blinded by racism and prejudice that as this monster came lunging at him with a knife, that he, ha he had time to reason, oh, well, here's my chance to kill me a coon? I mean, that's absurd. And all this about her being 
are elderly and helpless. Any grown man who has ever gotten into any kind of scuffle with a, uh, a large, fat lady knows they're like, uh, they're like superhuman, you know? And uh, it's like, it's like, like, um, like when I was a kid and like I was bad and I was going to be hit. I would always want my daddy to hit me because my mama, she, she was like a football player. I mean, I, I used to call her Hercules. Huh. She could pick me up off the ground with one hand and, and like, throw me across the room. Wow. And I was, like, 17 at the time. Huh. And, and like, my daddy, he would he used to go out and get drunk and get beaten up. And the guys would purposely tear his clothes so when he'd come home, my mama would give him a second beating. And, and forget it, like, she would, she would toss him around like he was a bag of potatoes. Warren, you're in, uh, you're in rare form today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello now to Warren. Hello, Bob. Warren from bed -Stuy. It's the real Warren. Uh, Bob, let me, let me say something to uh, this, this other guy, please. Since you've been on this radio station, I've been calling you. That's right. And as far as I could hear, no one has ever called you with more stinging criticisms and, and, and you know, complaints about things going on in this city and uh, about everything. I've had people over the radio say that because I give my opinion that I ought to have South African collaborated justice practice on me. Oh. That I have, uh, uh, that I should be called out of the race. I've heard all of these kind of things said about me. But nobody has ever said, except this Erzatz Warren, that I'm, I'm stuck in a liquor bottle, that I'm a, 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 like a piece of yellow paper, that I'm human waste, and all of this other kind of stuff. Well, he contradicted himself because time, right... The first time that I uh, said anything to or about him, I thought I was very generous. As a matter of fact, even you said I was generous. That's right. Okay? In response to criticisms to me, I have never referred to anybody in the kind of terms this guy uses about me. That's true. Okay? Now, when was that when you had the guy from the Post on? He was the editor of the Post. Uh, the publisher, the, uh, Pat Purcell, that was last week. Okay. I called you when he was on. And that little cop phone out that you had answering the phones, ask her what she did to me. Oh? What did you... Ask her. Well, you, you tell me. Uh, go ahead, tell me. What did she do I to you? I wanted to talk to the, to the editor of the Post about a reporter by the name of Charles Lockman. I've seen his byline, yes. He's the guy that wrote the story back in, I guess, February of last year about Paul Di Domenico. I've been calling you about that for a long time, right? You have, yes. I, I wanted to ask him about that. Yeah. She told me that my call would not be accepted. Well, she had no authority to do that. Okay, now, I don't know whether maybe it was because he was getting ready to leave or whatever. Now, now, uh, people who are screeners... If I call you, if I call no. you and your producers tell me that no. uh, my call won't be accepted, I sit and listen to the phone ring for a thousand rings and nobody picks up the phone. I mean, and then, you know, you got this, this, this phony warrant. This is getting to be ridiculous. Well, I'll have to talk to uh, the uh, person you're talking about and straighten her out uh, because somebody else broke her in. You see, if I had come in here and broke in the people who, who labor in the vineyards backstage, so to speak, they'd all be uh, much better uh, and much, uh, they'd be worth more to the company. But they were broken in by lesser lights than I. You understand, Warren? Well, why do you have people who, who, uh, who aren't even familiar with you or your callers? 
Uh, I'll tell you, because I'm a schnook, because I didn't demand it at the time I was hired, and I should have. I'm too easy going now, and a lot of people won't believe that. They'll say, oh, he's hollering on it, but they don't know that I, that I, have, uh, that I have given in, and, I, and, and much to my regret, um, have uh, had, uh, in many cases, people who don't do the program justice. I'm not particularly talking about this person, because this is the first bad report I've had on her. But uh, she tries very hard, and I'm sure once I have a talk with her, she'll be okay, because uh, her heart's in the right place. Okay, can I make a comment about how it beat? i tell you what, you certainly can, but one thing, are you going to be at Queensboro Community College tomorrow? Well, my car is down right now, and if I did, have, if I did come out, there would have to be by public transportation, and I hate public transportation. I don't blame you. You've got a good excuse. But uh, I'm not going to promise anything, but I'll try to get over See, that's the kind of guy you are. You are so honorable. The, the, you know what? The cowardly, phony thing to do would be to say, yeah, and then just not be there. But you are an honorable person. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I mean, that... Well, I want you there. You know why? Because... I, I want you to be seen by the crowd, and that fake Warren won't be there. Well, I don't believe the fake Warren is going to be there. This is this is ridiculous with this guy. I think I think what he seizes on is uh, is what you say about me. You know your response to what I say. I mean, I just I, I call, I give my opinion. You agree, you disagree, or whatever. But what you say about me, he seizes on this. I mean, I think this is what smoked him out, that uh, your, your compliments and, and whatever. Well, I've always been impressed by what you've said, and I don't know you. You know, I wouldn't know you if it came walking in the room. I wouldn't know but, you. But this is getting to be sick now. This, this is getting to be sick. <laughs> this, is not, this is not normal. I'm Listen, Warren, you got to come out there tomorrow. You know Channel 4 is sending a, a crew out there. they got to televise the thing. You better come out, Warren. Well, okay, let me, let, me, let me say a few words about Howard Beach, okay? Uh, okay, in about 30 seconds, Howard. Uh, wait a minute, stay right there. Stay right there, don't move. All right. Right now, let's check in with Gene Swan with WABC Shadow Traffic. Interruption. <laughs> okay. All right, what do you want to say about Howard Beach, Warren? Okay, um, uh, this city, um, this city cannot survive another two, three years, uh, certainly another decade. This city cannot survive the political and bureaucratic structure that this city is in the grip of. We, we can't survive it. Howard Beach is a direct outgrowth of this political system here. According to what I read about Howard Beach, George Sandiford, Michael Griffith, and John Lester should have all been in jail on, Jan on uh, uh, December the 20th. That's right. John Lester was caught in a stolen car with burglar tools and a gun. That's right. In August. Why was he out on December the, tw uh, the 20th? George Sandiford went into a convenience store in Virginia with a sawed-off shotgun in 1975. Don't you mean Cedric Sandiford? Uh, Cedric, I'm sorry, Cedric Sandiford. In 75, he tried to rob a convenience store with a, a sawed-off shotgun. Yeah. What was he doing out of jail? And Michael Griffith was going around stealing cars and was suspect in a murder that a cop in, I believe it was the 71st Precinct, made a mistake in his case, and he was out. Yep. Now, as far as the reaction to Howard Beach, Alton Maddox and C. Vernon Mason have said outright that they are going to harness and ride the Howard Beach situation. They have said it openly. And it makes no sense for anybody to bellyache about so-called black leaders when black leaders are themselves a creation of white people. Yeah. They are, they are the, the outright creation of no more than five people in New York City who have television crews at their, what, beck and call. That's right. Herbert Daughtry can call the editors of all the TV stations and say, 
I'm going to defecate on the corner of DeKalb and uh, Atlantic. And you know, they'd have crews down there. They'd hire uh, uh, proctology experts. Uh, they'd hire, uh, they'd hire uh, all kinds of people to go down there and cover it because the media is a bunch of stooges. You're absolutely right. Warren, I hope you can make it tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the real Warren, ladies and gentlemen, the real Warren.